Hi, my name is Jerry and I'm a family caregiver or care partner. So like 53 million Americans, I provide unpaid care for an ill family member, friend, uh, or sometimes it's somebody who's injured or disabled, but that can be anything from medication management and doctor's appointments to transportation, bathing, actually doing hands-on medical care or helping with health insurance and finances. And as I was trying to work and caregive, I really found that most employers aren't sure how they can help employees with this, even though it's becoming a big challenge for them. So I actually co-founded an organization called the Difference Collaborative to help employers think about this. And this is five things everyone should know about working and caregiving. Well, first of all, it's increasingly done by everyone and anyone. Uh, men, women, younger and younger people are caregiving. And while sometimes we expect caregiving to go on for many, many years, for example, if you're caring for somebody with dementia, what we don't realize is that on average, most caregiving lasts five years. For example, if somebody's in the hospital or needs surgery or gets a new diagnosis, you might think that's gonna be something short, but it's often just the beginning of a much longer care journey. The other thing is many people are also repeat caregivers. So they might start off by caring for an aging parent or grandparent and then need to care for an ill or injured child or partner or friend. And so caregiving can happen many times to one person. Now caregiving can be incredibly meaningful and unfortunately because people don't get the support they need, caregiving can really take a toll on people. So as it goes on and becomes more intense, people often experience a lot of stress, poor sleep, they can become depressed or socially isolated, and they also don't take good care of their own health. And when it comes to caregiving and working, we know from studies done by places like Harvard, Rosalind Carter Institute, and AARP, that about four in 10 people who are working in caregiving actually go part-time. Many people turn down jobs and promotions, and other times people actually quit work entirely or retire early, about 10 to 20% of people do that. So there's a lot of people leaving the workforce this way or really having to cut back on work. As you can imagine, that takes a lot of financial strain. So people often spend their own money to care give and spend down their savings. They might even take on new debt. And especially if they're doing something like now only working part-time, they also aren't earning as much and saving as much over time. When workplaces support family caregivers, we know that it can be a huge help, both in terms of them being able to continue to work, but also for their health and well-being. And so work can even be something that people look forward to as a break from caregiving. They get to come in, see their friends, do something else for a while. Good news is this is also an opportunity to improve work for everyone, right? Because everybody wants to work in a caring, flexible workplace. So how can we create caring cultures where people can care, work, and thrive?